Joining me is a hip hop legend in the game right now. Your book's just come out. Yeah, yeah. DJ Semtex, what are you saying? What's happening? What are you saying? I'm, what are you saying? What are you saying? <laughs> Remember, this time around, I'm asking you the questions. It's, it's different. It's, <laughs> it's on the other side. You can't just be yeah, thinking yeah, it like yeah. that. All right, all right. How's it feel? Um, feels like there's work to be done. Really? Like, yeah, man. It's like I'm not. I'm never. You know, like you know, like when I do a mix, yeah. I never listen to it again because okay. I always feel like I could do a better one. Yeah. So it's like it feels a bit like that. Yeah. It feels a bit like there's more to be done. You, you know? feel? I think maybe you're beating yourself up a bit, you know? Nah. Because that, that's a big, that's a big book. It's a big statement. It is, but the, I got, I got, I got to do the work to promote it. Okay. I got to figure out what to do next. Like I want to do another one. The, yeah. the one thing that I learned from doing this book is there's a need. For more, yeah. you know, not not just for me, from anybody who's involved in the culture, anyone who's got a story to tell, yeah, like need more books from the people who actually live it, you yeah. know, because when 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 everything, you know, no one lives forever, yeah, and you know we're gonna go at some point, but what 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 is gonna be the marker? What is gonna be the history that you leave for the kids and the kids' kids? Exactly, like, yeah. You, you know we do very very well in music but when it comes to books there aren't many hip hop books there isn't you know? so um, yeah you know I'm not saying it all falls on my shoulders but I do want I do want to do more writing you put so. it on your shoulders a bit you know <laughs> <laughs> that pressure is there because right now we got in the last like month and a half we've had three books that have come out so we've had right. Ben Westhoff he's kind of come out of a West Coast book yeah about West Coast hip hop yeah and we've got This Is Grime yeah yeah and then we've got your book that's come out now yeah. so you've got three kind of books that are like pushing levels on certain things mm. so for you obviously leaving a legacy behind for the kids and gen future generations is that why you wanted to make the book in the first nah, place I, w I wanted to make the book because it's, it's all about the positive. Yeah. I think there's a lot of sites, magazines that celebrate the negative constantly. Yeah. I haven't, there's not that many great books on hip hop. There's a couple, there's not, you know, not a lot. So I just felt um, some things that I wanted to say. And, you know, this, this is an amazing culture. It changed my life. You yeah. Know? And I thought, you know, it's a way that I could do something that, is inspiring because it's an inspiring culture. Yeah. It, I don't know what I'd be doing if I wasn't consumed by it the way that I have been. Yeah. You know. Where well, it literally raised you. Yeah. That's literally there. You go. You no pun intended. Yeah, you know. Exactly. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know? And and uh, but I know it's done the same for other people. It's yeah. Like there's other millions of people around the world who's done the same thing for. Well, the response has been crazy though. That's the thing, like, you know, artists have got involved, like Ghostface Killer, like, yeah. you know, that like cosign, yeah. massive, obviously I'm sure you know him, like, on a level yeah. anyway, so. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, I know these guys, but, you know, at the end of the day, when I'm saying to them, um, I've done this book, do you mind having a look at it? They could yeah. easily say no. They don't owe me anything. Yeah. Like, it's not, you know, I've earned the respect over the years and I've done interviews with them and played their music, but they still don't owe me anything. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, I'm just grateful. But you know what, there's the fact of that, like, especially someone from the UK making a book on hip hop. Cause no one, you wouldn't really expect it. Most of the time when Americans sometimes come to the UK, mm. they're like, they still think that, you know, British hip hop is something completely different. So when you're coming and providing a hip hop book, it's, nah, it's different. Nah, the, the ones that, the ones that have had the biggest careers understand how important the UK is. Mm. And it, it's like Chuck D says in the forward, you know, he, he, he saw that there was a hunger and a passion for the music. Yeah. And, you know, Kanye is the first to say that the UK gets it first and other artists that, you know, it, they, they genuinely understand that there's a passion over here. Like we appreciate it as much, if not more than most Americans, because, you know, I think it's that thing where if you're from a certain place where that thing originates, you can take it for granted. Yeah. Whereas people overseas are just because they're starved of it or because it's not as easily access, access accessible. Um, 
you appreciated that bit more. Yeah. It's true. All right, so for breaking down the book then, for anyone who hasn't read it, it's been out about just oh, just under a week yeah. right now yeah, at this yeah. stage. So what was the reason behind the book? So you've kind of got the kind of t- key tagline right mm. there. So it's like, K-pop has raised me is definitive volume mm. on essence, experience, mm. and also energy that is hip hop, mm. right? So for anyone like who's just kind of you know, listening to this and want to go pick up the book, mm. if she's in stores right now in all available bookstores, yeah, yeah. that plug right there. Yeah, yeah. But on Amazon. Exactly, yeah. on Amazon. We'll online. pop that after the show. <laughs> Click on that link straight after this. Trust me, no no, uh, shameless plug-in right now, you know. But um, yeah, so why, what can you kind of expect to see in the book? What's going to kind of drag people to kind of have a look at this book? All right, this book is, (laughs) all right, this book is a self-help book. It's a history book. Yeah. It's a reference book. It's a book about the most exciting culture on earth. It's a book about some of the most inspirational people that, inspire generations of people to do something with their lives. Um, this book is about the voice of the voiceless. It's all of those things. Yeah. So you know what, like it's connecting people. It's connecting people. I mean, it's not, it's inspiring people more than anything else. I mean, yeah. the original idea I had for the, for the book was tragedy to triumph. And I was gonna do like 10 chapters on people who've been through some kind of trauma. Yeah. Right. So, you know, I, I read books by an author called Malcolm Gladwell. Um, he's done stuff like The Tipping Point, 10,000 Hours. Yeah. And it's just like fascinating ways of looking at why people do certain things and how this affects certain people and yeah. so forth. And Freakonomics, right, explains how certain events have happened and so forth. So my thing was, there ain't that many positive things out there for yeah. youth, you know, to relate to. Yeah. You know, so I was like, I've interviewed all these artists. I know 50 Cent, Kanye West, Michael Moore, Dizzy Valley. Like, I know all these people who've been through some serious kind of event, but yeah. they turn their life around. Even though they've rapped about it, you see, you see the glamour and the glitz and the success. Yeah. You see the happy ever after. They mention that they've been through something, yeah. but it doesn't get broken down. They don't focus into it because they want people to listen to the music instead. Right. Yeah. So my focus, my thing was, let, what is the catalyst? What is that? What is that thing that makes you turn your life around? What is that thing that when you've been shot nine times and you get dropped and everybody's against you, that you have that resolve to get up and turn your life around and you're one of the most successful businessmen on the planet? Yeah. What is that catalyst? And I wanted to know. That's why I wanted to do the book on it. But also... Yeah. I felt there's a need for like people to see that, you know, because that doesn't get celebrated. So my manager takes the idea to the book, to a book company called Thames and Hudson. And they're like, yeah, we like the idea, but we want you to do the book on hip hop. So I was okay. like, I can't do the book on hip hop because yeah. it's 40 years worth of content and 30 people should be doing it, not just one. So they were like, no, 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 we want you to do it. We want you to do it and everything else. So I was like, so I went away for a few days I actually turned it down. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> actually, I was actually like, no, 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 I shouldn't be doing this. Good thing you didn't. Yeah. That's what we said. Yeah. And then, and then I was listening to a track by Malcolm Moore, um, "Can't Hold Us" with the lyric, the lyrics that says, um, "What do you expect when Wu Tang raised you?" Mm. So I was like, "Yeah, it raised me a bit. Mm, Public Enemy raised me. Actually, hip hop raised me. Actually, hip hop's raised most people I know. Yeah, you know. Um, so I thought." Yeah, hip hop raised me. Like that's the realest thing I could write. So it kind of combines the original aim of because I've been through some stuff myself. Yeah. So and you know when you say how has hip hop raised you? Like well, everything that, from being a DJ, I wanted to become a DJ because I saw Terminator X on stage killing it, and from Public Enemy, I was a fan of Public Enemy because I was going through some stuff at the time and the music made sense. Yeah. It's like, you see, everything so it working backwards. Up. Yeah. So why was you going through some stuff? So you, you, you got to break everything down. And yeah. that's why it's, yeah, it's, there's a story attached to it. But the underlying thing is, it's, it's a book about people who turn their lives around on a bigger yeah. scale. You know, with in terms of Jay-Z, there was a time when labels didn't want to sign him. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, crazy, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, shout out to everybody who's yeah, yeah. in doubt because they made a big mistake. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, 
and it, and you know it's an amazing story and I think the way that I've presented some of the chapters and the way that I've written I don't think it's been done before so yeah so all right so breaking it down then so setting it up and actually you know make it into a book hmm. was it different than kind of doing a radio documentary because it's kind of you know yeah you're, yeah you're writing now yeah kind definitely of, yeah it's um yeah because you know you, you've got to make words make sense yeah you got to make each chapter sound different. It's mm. very, you know, I wrote 100,000 words and then it, over a six month period and then it got trimmed down to 48,000 words. Um, yeah, that's a lot of like words getting cut, you know. Yeah, I should have, you know, I should have done a PhD at the same time. Trust or me. It's like, <laughs> like, you know, so, and it's pretty easy to write about because it's about music that I love and it's yeah. music that I've grown up on. But um, you still got to make it make sense. Yeah. You still got to, you write it then you check it you do about four drafts before you hand it in yeah then you hand it in you get it sent back to you and you got to shorten it hand it back yeah you got to shorten it again so every time you've got to make an edit you got to read it again to make sure it makes sense mm. so it's a long it's process very intense yeah yeah but we uh, spent six months writing it three months editing it yeah which is pretty quick that's you know, very quick in publishing terms yeah so obviously you said you wanted to kind of think about making like another one mm. Would you think about making a magazine? Because one of my mates actually thought, like, okay, this is good, and it's like it's a benchmark. Whereas a magazine, like once a year, because you know, back in the day, skills used to do that, like oh eight, oh nine wrap up. Yeah. Like a magazine, kind of following up every single year, marking the biggest events. No one does that either. People tend to forget stuff. Yeah, do as a book though. Mm. Like, I bet the cost of doing a paperback book isn't that far away from doing a one-off magazine. You think? Yeah. Definitely. Shut down, you know. <laughs> <laughs> shut down still, you know. Nah, it's not shut down. It's like, you might be right. I might be wrong. There's no right or wrong answer. Who knows? But but what is the best thing you could do? What's going to last the test of time? Yeah. What's going to be there in your attic 50 years from now? Like, that is a time capsule for the next generation. Mm, trust me, because Hip Hop Raise Me is a big book. Yeah. That's a, that's a murder weapon right there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Hip, hip Hop Raise Me, Hip Hop Kill Me, man. <laughs> if you broke in, yeah. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> today. But um, yeah, all right, let's talk about like hip hop and how it's changed. So yeah. before it was kind of, you know, seen as like the enemy. Mm. It wasn't like, I kind of grew up, my first album I bought was 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying, right. with my own money. Yeah, yeah. And I was 10 when I bought that. Right. And I had wow. to kind of like lie, I had to lie and be like, right. there's no swear words yeah, yeah, yeah. But back, you know, even before that in the 90s, it was seen as the enemy, it wasn't seen as yeah, like yeah. something good. Kind of still is. Do you know what, it's turned around though. And A bit. I, reason why I say it's turned around is, Jay-Z and Drake, I'm gonna use them two just for mm. now. They are kind of like the key people, like Drake is kind mm. of almost a household name now. Mm. Not many houses across the UK, across the world probably don't know who Drake is. Jay-Z and Beyonce, them two mm. are the power couple. Like, you know, Jay-Z the other day was rocking that, um, that you know, used to be a drug dealer hat mm. and stuff like that. And it kind of shows the transformation, how Jay-Z is accepted. You know what I mean? So with- All right, yeah. would you play a Jay-Z album in front of your mum? Yeah, my mum likes French Montana. Oh, okay. Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, your grandmother. <laughs> nah, that's the same. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, I mean, I hear what you're saying, but yeah. also on CNN yesterday, there was some news anchor woman saying about how Hillary Clinton likes Beyonce, who says things about if he walks me good, I'll take my man to Red Lobster. And she's trying to use that as a negative yeah, to say yeah, how yeah. bad Hillary is. So it still gets beaten up and it still yeah. gets used for like other people's agendas when yeah. when people feel like it. But I feel like it's not as, you know, heavily criticized. You know, before obviously if that, when it came out, like for example, NWA, mm. direct, you know. They, I don't know, I had to go on a TV show defending 50 Cent when he first came out of Get Rich or Die Trying. I yeah. think the next time a gangster rapper comes out, definitely. And also, like, let's not forget the way that the media like rips Kanye West apart. Yeah. And like, yeah, we, we all know like what his rants are about. We all know it's like an extension of the music. Yeah. But the media makes him look deranged though. Like they, they crucify him. Mm. Like, so it's kind of like, they still mock it. They still put a negative slant on it. It's never, they never celebrate the positive. They're not saying, yeah, look how great Drake is or anything like that. They hate the fact that it was number one for so long. Yeah. They they use it to beat up Radio One. Like, look, all they do is play Drake. Mm, they tried to cut it off, yeah. What's up with that? <laughs> Have to look at the camera as well, you know, and be like, what's up with that? What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just feel like sometimes it's like 20 years ago, it was a lot worse than it is now. Nah, it's still venues that want you play hip hop. Yeah, well, it's, there's places in Croydon that don't want it to do that. So it's, yeah. it could be mad still. Yeah, man. Right, yeah. so breaking it down for you then, what was the first album or project that you ever bought, which kind of like introduced you into hip hop in general? 
My brother had albums yeah. that I listened to and he had tracks that I listened to. Like, um, But the first thing that I bought myself was probably it's Public Enemy. It takes, it's, it's three albums. It's Public yeah. Enemy, Takes a Nation of Millions, Ice-T, The Power Album, and BDP, By Any Means Necessary. Okay. So it wasn't one, it was three at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good cop out. You like, mixed up in it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, was, there was some times where you just ghosted in it, just yeah. banging it out. No, but I went, I, went to the, I went to the US for the first time ever when I was like 16. Okay. So I go into this, this, this music store, yeah. and like I see all these, I've never seen anything like it, all these hip hop albums. And I was like, I was like, oh shit, this is what my brother listens to. And then I was like, I had a little bit of spending money in it, so I was mm. like, oh, let me buy these albums. I felt big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, and the dollar was strong, you know, yeah, when the yeah, pound was strong yeah, against yeah. the dollar, like one Yo, to two we're, dollars. We're paupers now, man. Yeah, man. Well, that currency. They killed us. They killed us. Just God does still. Yeah, we're broke. We're bombs now. You know what? Let's get to a track before we even yeah. go going. So, yeah. out of any track in the world right now, what track would you play right now? What's your track for this now? Early, early days. Early days? Yeah. Um... Let's take it to Dougie Fresh featuring Slick Rick, the show. Jeez. This is a classic. This is like, you gotta remember, this is a classic for a lot of reasons. One, because it's a beatboxer who's on the record, and two, it's an English MC. Yeah. So this, this is the godfather of UK rap, really, but it's a banging track as well, and you know, it sounds as good as it, it did back then. Today is, you know, anything else. So it's like, yeah, it's a fire. From Mitchum as well. From Mitchum. Yeah. CR4. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yo, 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 this is DJ Semsex right now. You just heard Slick Rick, Dougie Fresh back to back. The show, you feeling that? Yeah, I like it still. Classic. Are you taking over my show? Taking over, bro. Because I'll kind of deep, you know. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? This is not one extra, fam. This is not one extra, fam. <laughs> but all right, so linking it in then to music that is kind of being championed in the UK right now. Yeah, yeah. That is grime music. Yeah, and I saw you tweet. I think it was today or some stage this week. Yeah. and you're like, you couldn't kind of do a hip hop, but you know, without mentioning grime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what do you think about this? Because sometimes I feel like because grime now has just been seen as UK UK music in general. Mm -hmm. I feel like some hip hop artists are just kind of being like either pressure to one making grime music so they stay relevant, or two, they're just they're making hip hop music, but it's just being put as grime. Yeah, it's, it's a lazy analogy. Like God bless the media for being lazy and. You know, yeah, it's like Section Boys gets labelled as grime. Mm. You know, Loyal Khan the other day was like he was mentioned in the newspaper as being a grime act. Like, <laughs> you know, like, and and it's it's lazy. You know, yeah. it's a joke. Um, but I, I think what's happened with grime is an amazing thing. It's like, you know, it's 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 not a direct descendant of hip hop. It's yeah. definitely influenced by it, and. You know, it's closer to dancehall than it is to hip hop in terms of the roots and what it's about yeah. and how it came about from the art clashing. But it is our own UK voice, yeah. you know, um, the distinctive voice. So it's dope. I just hope it goes from strength to strength, you know. Exactly. Well, yeah, it's like I saw some of the other stuff you were tweeting today as well about people like, you no, know, you know, trying to eat off the scene. Yeah. Not so much and stuff. Do you think that kind of happens and people come and go and as trends and yeah, stuff? Yeah, th you get a lot of people who see this as a phase in growing up, you know, yeah. or they don't realise it's a phase in growing up and they just, you know, they, it gets annoying. You see scenesters like making out like they're grind purists and everything. And it's like, really? You was listening to Black Eyed Peas two years ago. So <laughs> they were around two years you ago. Know you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. so it's kind of like, and then I've seen the grind thing from the start, I've seen it have its highs, I've seen it at its lows. Yeah. And it's like, you know, everybody who's been involved in it and fought for what they believed in and stuck by what they believed in, it's, it's like, you gotta commend them, man. You gotta respect them for that. And yeah. don't take the piss. Don't try to come into it and rinse it. You yeah. Know? Um, you, you can't, you know, it's no. <laughs> you know what it just drops don't get no. me started bro like yeah trust me long you get the hip hop lecture right now you know we're about to start charging admission for this you know <laughs> but going back to the book so a soundtrack accompanies the book nah I pulled you changed it you changed it now yeah because I heard rumours about this and I was going to ask you what songs you would have kind of used nah that's the problem because I was trying to do we was looking at doing something but um, it's it wasn't, it, I wasn't gonna get the tracks that I needed, so I was just like. You leave it? Nah, yeah. 
is it one of them ones you have to work through like you know get like clearance and all that or could you just yeah yeah, yeah. it's long yeah it's long because you know all these some artists signed to this label to that label and everything else is politics trying to get yeah and i couldn't do an album without having drake or jay-z on it you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah. then you'd be like yo send work one for two people Z. yeah people start adding <laughs> you, right? it would be yo, good you know send me got no kanye in your album like mm. you know, yeah, I mean, say to that, like, trust me you just actually yeah. you just send emojis in it that's what people yeah. do it just reply back in emojis like just nah, I'd rather, I'd rather just, not, I'd rather wait and do it another time when it's appropriate, you know, Fair. properly. So, what about the show then? Are you gonna do the? Are you gonna still do the show? Which the? So like a kind of a hip hop radio nah, show. You cra- nah, scrap that as well. Nah, 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 crash that as well. You scrap everything. No, nah, we did, we did the clothing. Clothing yeah. did good. Like, um, nah, we did the graffiti piece last night in Croydon. That was fun, but with the show. Again, I couldn't get who I wanted. Yeah. Like, I, can you imagine the embarrassment? I do shows all year round. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just a couple of weeks ago, I had an amazing show with Little Yachty. Yeah. And then I couldn't get anyone fucked up with the ninth. Like, it, it was like crazy. Mm. It was. Originally, I wanted Run the Jewels, Naz, and Joey Badass. I felt that that was just exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no one was about. It'll be about soon, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Like, yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah, yeah. hopefully, that like, something can happen. Like, yeah. like that line off was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like crazy, it's right? Level. That's level. It, it had to be that. Like, it had to be something that was like you're never gonna see again. Yeah. There's no point in me just doing one thing. At one point, it was gonna be like designer and some other people, and it's like. Yeah, it's like but it's not. It's not. It's not Naz, what you saw. Nah, it's not Nas, Joey Badass, and one of the jewels on the same stage. Exactly. Yeah. No. I mean, I mean in between. Hey, 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 another plug, hey, you know, another hey, plug. Hey. <laughs> but um, yeah, talking about like, you know, shows and that. So yeah. Semtex Arrivals has become, you know, a place where you can kind of witness new acts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, I went to the last two, so I went to Alan, well, not the last two, I went to Alan Kingdom and I went to right. Yachty. Yeah, yeah, So yeah, I think yeah. I missed Tunji, uh, Tunji EJ. You missed Tunji EJ and you missed Russ. Okay. Yeah, Russ so, was dope. Yeah, nah, I, said, I wanted to come yeah. to that one, but. Yeah, that was sick. Sometimes Sunday nights is a bit of a myth for me, you know? No, that was a Saturday. Is it a Saturday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No excuse. No excuse, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You're waiting my concerts for yeah. set up. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, talking about, you know, Semtex Arrivals. So yeah. what made you start that? Because, you know, I think for, uh, before I, you know, sorry to cut you, but like, I think sometimes a DJ is in your position. Like you're so high up and you've done so much. Sometimes it's hard to look the other way, if you know what I mean. Nah, you know what it is? All right, so someone comes over and does their first ever show. Yeah. It's amazing, right? Yeah. Even if it isn't amazing, it's memorable, right? Yeah, well, Alan Kingdom, I thought was really cool, yeah. Second show, eh. You're getting there. Third show, it's like the second show. I don't know, sometimes the third show is decent. Fourth show, that's too professional. You know, it's mm. big stage, big lights and all yeah. of that. And you're so far away from the artist. It's like, what's the point? Yeah. So for me, it's like, I, I really value those intimate shows. And that first show where an artist comes over for the first time and they gasp, it's a special moment for yeah. them. Um, yeah, I feel that's like the best moment. Yeah. You, you, we live in an age where everything's either downloaded or streamed. You can't download or stream that experience. Mm. So every show's been a battle. Every show's been like, yeah, why am I doing this? <laughs> Bit of that, you know. Yeah. But, you know, there's been some amazing moments. Like the first Joey Badass show, like, yeah. it's amazing. You know, and it's, it's um, I think I think it's got more of a historical aspect to it rather than doing a, you know, oh yeah, I did this show at the O2. I did this show at yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But you think is you like, like some of the smaller gigs, they're, yeah. they're better. They feel like birthdays is such a good venue. Did you go to the future one? Didn't. <sighs> Nah, I wish bro, I went to the future one. The future one was insane, bro. The mm. future, one, I thought someone was gonna die at it. <laughs> like I was, I was like, yo, this is this is hard. Like yeah. this is sick. Like it was like a zoo. Speakers were falling off walls. People were getting crushed at the front. And I was like, oh, this is sick. They're trying to set up carnival after party. Uh, and I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, this is sick. Oh shit, someone might die. You don't want to be in that newspaper, you know? So nah, man. Nah, nah, yeah, nah, nah, yeah, just nah. Not at all. Not at all. So after that one, we were like. Yeah, we we you know like Young Thug, we made sure the venue was bigger. Me, yeah. we did that at Coco. That was amazing. Um, I think you kind of know like who should be in what position. I think Alan Kingdom was a nice part of it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Birthdays, whereas yeah, yeah. Lil Yachty was good. Yeah, yeah. At, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot where the venue was. It was in it's Hybrid. Garage. Yeah, garage, that's, yeah. That's an am- that, I think that was one of the best. Yeah, like, yeah. everything about that night was. Sick. Wait, it was just so calm. Like yeah, he came yeah, in, yeah. And he just turned yeah, up. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what, personally for me, like obviously you're someone who kind of like you know follows. 
like Lil Yachty, you know, yeah, you yeah. put him on yeah, into yeah. into the UK. Like yeah, that was a sold out show. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really know about Lil Yachty like as in his music. I was a bit like, yeah, mm, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Mm. like one night I was like, yeah. mm. like, yeah. and then now I see it and I, yeah. like, I saw him live, in Minnesota. Like, yeah, and I'm just same. like, do you know what? Yeah, I, even the same for me though. Minnesota, yeah. I never really paid attention to it properly. I saw that. I was like. Yeah, I need to be playing this. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, okay. yeah. yeah. So, what, what do you think then? Like bringing that to like old school versus new school? Then, like, because obviously he got a lot of stick for you know saying he yeah. couldn't name five Tupac or Biggie songs, and then his dad even came out the other day and was like, "Look, he makes songs for teenagers now." Mm. So, do you think? Are you? What do you think of this kind of crossover that we're getting now? Because we're getting like little Uzi verts and that coming through, sounding completely different. It's to a new other day, people. you know. It's a new day, new voices, new things to say, new yeah. ways of saying them. And that's it. Hip hop always evolves. It's not. You can't be mad at a kid who says, "I can't name five Biggie tracks." Yeah. Well, you must go home and revise. <laughs> like that's not what hip hop is. Hip hop was never that. Yeah. And then you sound like parents. Mm. And then hip hop was never about subscribing to your parents' approval. True. It wasn't. That's true. It was like turn that down. No, turn it up. Mm. You know, it was like bust that dial off. Don't play that. Yeah, I'll get the next album as well. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like don't you, wear your shoes you, like that. Oh, I get some more crazy ones. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Everything. Oh, you got a hole in your jeans. Yeah, I make another one. You know, every yeah. everything was flipped. They so, made the hole too big, boy. They, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so it's like at the end of the day, it's like I, I don't care about that. Is the music good? Yeah, cool. Let's go. Yeah, and that's all that matters to me. I don't, I don't care. Like you know, mm. there's a lot of artists who don't know the history. Yeah. How many artists have come over here like, yeah, what do you think you get? Yo, I'd be like in Skepta. Do you know any more acts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'll get embarrassing. It, it gets a bit annoying, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the same thing. Like, and what are you going to do? You're going to pl- complain about that? Yeah. yeah. Let's get on with it. It's the thing is, to be fair, like it happened to me because I saw like Young Fuck and when I first, when I had Lifestyle, mm. like I had Stoner first, but that was a while back. I was like yeah. 2013. The Lifestyle was kind of his, one of his bigger breakthroughs and I was like, bro, I could not understand anything you're saying. Yeah. Now, same way, I've got like, no, my name is Jeffrey on my iPod. I'm banging it out because eventually I feel like you make that crossover. But do you understand what he says now? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, no, no. I, I, Anyone who says the dude's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Someone on, like, put on YouTube put like graphics saying like, living life like a volcano. Man is not saying that, like. Yeah. People don't understand, they wouldn't rap genius, Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Doug's dope. Yeah, mm. that's the main thing. Like, all right, so for you then, like moving it to, like, you know, discovering new people and that, like Kanye West, mm. you know, he shouted you out 2005 mm. times, back, way back, even mm. Drake. Was it High yeah. Park that you went to with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, walking around yeah. that back yeah. in, like, so far gone comeback yeah, season yeah, yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, what is it like kind of working with these people from when you see them on the come up to being these, like, big names? Um, that's a good question. Thank you. Um, I think it's crazy because you know they're going to do something and that's why I track them down and yeah. that's why I'm like early because I know this is going to pop off yeah. even if no one else gets it I really don't care but yeah. and it's kind of like part of that is how the vibe of night is come out of that basically like that first you know, like you said about Yachty and you did the first show it's an extension of um, being early in the interview and everything but it's 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 just great to see people evolve, you know? See yeah. artists, like, the way that Kanye's gone from college dropout. I mean, this is the thing. So, um, with college dropout, he wanted to do a listening thing, private listening thing, uh, somewhere to play the album to the DJs. Yeah. So, we've got a room with one extra, 15 DJs in the room. And then he's done the same thing for Pablo, but it's a Madison Square Garden with, like, 20,000 yeah. people in the exactly, room. Exactly, yeah. And the fashion Levels. show going on behind the background. Levels. Right? Yeah. So, he, Kanye's one of the greatest of our time. You know, he's, he's the classical composer. We just don't refer to him as that. Mm. Um, and I think Drake, the beautiful thing about Drake, right? It sounded moist. <laughs> the most impressive thing about Drake is that he's not American. Yeah. you got a non-American guy at the top of the rap game. Mm open season like Pretty anyone much, yeah. can get it in but you know what I think because Canada's so close though it's I feel like will you see do you think you'll see a UK person at the top like dominating the world Cause I think it's, yeah. I think, I think I still think we're a, like, a little while away nah I, I, think, I don't think I think if you think like that you will be mm. just make great music yeah anything's happen, anything can happen anything's possible that's true 
you know. Nation of Billions, fam. Standard. I had to bring that in. I had to slide <laughs> that one in, you know. <laughs> so Nation of Billions is also yeah. like, you know, a big project that you work with. Yeah, yeah. And like, when you like, you know, started that and you were building with it, yeah. what was the aim? Just to make a Nation of Billionaires or? That's good, I should use that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I should be like, yeah, Tagline. yeah, that, that was the aim all along. Like. Trademark, <laughs> just putting this in now, you know. Now, what it was, um, Again, I got sick of seeing certain sites like always mock the culture, yeah. like not presenting it in the right way. Um, and the title of the site is a play on my favorite Public Enemy album, Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back. Okay. I think it's safe to say there's, there's a nation of billions. Yeah. Uh, there's a nation of billions of hip hop fans across the world. You, you, we're in an age where billions of people have seen Wiz Khalifa in a video. You yeah. Know? Um, the music's consumed like crazy like crazy amounts the fan base is wider than it's ever before so it was a, it was a play and it takes a nation of millions to hold us back yeah so we at the hip-hop nation is billions of people around the world yeah um and that's what it is it's all inclusive it's about great music yeah and that's it that's it's pretty simple okay it's about positive things it's about it's, it's about everything that hip-hop's about it's about everything that public enemy how it educated me it's about everything that it's about everything it's about everything about the people that contribute to it as well yeah so it's not just about me so DJ semtex.com was just me like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah well you got a nation of billions like section but nation separate, nation yeah. Of, yeah, yeah yeah but nation of billions is everyone yeah it's like whoever yeah, it's all inclusive. So because you don't got to get people asking you how to be like an honorary member of that, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, no, like, standard. Yeah. yeah, just hit up the page. Like, mm. team will be in touch. Like, <laughs> and that, and that's it. And and that that's all it was. It's just like I got tired of, I got tired of certain other sites just doing the negative stuff all the time. Yeah, and it's not, it's not. This music's amazing. It's, it's, it yeah. changes lives. You well, know? the positive energy and like you know the contribution and stuff that you've done, especially with the book right now mm. out has been noticed do you know what I mean like a lot of people I think I, like if you weren't if you were coming with like bad mind bad vibes no, I don't do that I've no, never that's, done that's that what, that's yeah. what I'm saying if you, were, if you were coming with that you wouldn't be in the position that mm. you would be in and people wouldn't mess with you like how they mess with you that's mm. the that's the main thing mm. do you know before we continue let's get into another song yeah. so choose something more modern now more modern what are you thinking Kendrick Lamar alright really yeah why why because I think this is the anthem I think this is the this is music of substance. This is protest music. Okay. I think given everything that's going on in the world right now, yeah, definitely. what Kendrick says on this track is, it is some of the most important words you're going to hear. Yeah. It's, it's one of the most, the most rebellious tracks to come out in the last 18 months. But um, it's, yeah, it's an important record. So I'm here right now. It's only right that we do this. Yo, let me take over for a minute. It's DJ Semtex <laughs> right here. Protest music at its best. Kendrick Lamar. All right, let's go. Them ones there where, you know what I mean? I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? One extra West Side takeover. <laughs> but, um, all right, so that was... Actually, you know what? Before we even do that, I'm going to fling an eye as well. I'm going to fling an eye. There you go. Bang. All right, let's get into this as well. Kendrick Lamar, I. Cool. Done. All right, so bringing it back to the book before we leave. Yeah, yeah. All right, so where can people get that? Do all the plug-in or everything now? Yeah, the book is available from everywhere that sells books. Um, Amazon, it's on Amazon right now for £26. Everywhere else is £40, so take advantage of the discount. Trust me. The only thing I can say is, like, to add to that is that it's the perfect gift. So for Christmas, get it for your dad, get it for your brother, get it for your son, whatever. It's the perfect gift. Hip Hop Raise Me out now in all good stores. Trust me, any discounts for Black Friday, by the way? Boy. <laughs> factor that in, you know. It? Imagine you're saying, should, should have got the pre order and got a free t shirt. That's true, because I, I don't want it to be like Drake, £110, you know. <laughs> I ain't got that type of P to be spending that yeah, much money. £110 on that. is a lot, innit? That's bare. I ain't paying that. You're, of course you ain't. No, you're you're no, fine. No, no, no. You walked to him in Hyde Park <laughs> seven years ago. <laughs> you get him for free. I, I think I'll, I watch your live stream or something. 110. But there I'm you saying go. it's like 110, like, yeah, that's a lot, man. Mm. It's hard to out here. Yeah, he took advantage of Brexit, innit? <laughs> Trust me. Anyway, family, listening in, we're going to leave it there. DJ Semtex, With thank you. you so much for coming through today. Nah, it's all good, man. All the best. Actually, you know what? Choose one more song. We'll finish, it. We'll finish off on it. 
Chance the Rapper um, featuring Two Chains and Little Wayne, no problem. That was my former track of the week. Make a good choice right there. Great minds. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hip Hop Raise V is out right now. Make sure you go cop that. It's your boy Miles. Peace. DJ Semtex in the building. Channel.